Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm your friendly neighborhood blue mage, Azerain. Today we're going to be talking about a color in magic that you may argue is the strongest color. Power, ambition, greed, and winning at any cost. This color seeks to drain your opponent's life total, bolstering your own, and giving you the ability to give your own life for powerful effects. That's right. Today, we are talking about Mono Black. I think you can summarize Mono Black by saying that everything comes at a cost. You want to draw cards? Just trade in your life total. You want to make some treasures? Yeah, just pay some life. You want to bring a creature back from the graveyard? Just pay some life. Black is the color of power, for a price. In order to get a return from Black, you have to give something up, and that something is usually your life total. Thank you for tuning in for today's video. Thank you for your support as I try and make YouTube partner, and please remember to comment and subscribe if you like what you see here. Anyway, back to the reason why you came here today. I have heard Black described as a bit unfair in Commander. The way that Black functions in a standard 60 card format is different than Commander. Black in 60 card is designed in a way to penalize you because you only have 20 health points. In Commander, we have double that. Black gives you powerful effects while taking life in return. In a 1v1 60 card format, paying 1 or 2 life for certain effects can be detrimental. But in Commander, we start with double the life, so we can really gamble with more. Whether that's hitting a huge creature with Reanimate, or paying 2 life to make a gold with a card like Greed, or paying 39 life into our Necropotence. It definitely sounds like black can be broken. I'm here today to convince you to play Mono Black. Many of you probably see black as one of, if not the most powerful color in Magic. Black is notorious for doing most things. Black excels at killing things, making mana, drawing cards, sapping others' life totals, big creatures, and most notably, its graveyard synergy. Anyone who has ever played black has a sigh of relief when one of their creatures is sent to the graveyard more often than not, as they will have multiple ways of getting that creature back. When you're playing mono black, you start to not be worried about things like spot removal or board wipes, because you will most likely get to recover better than any of the other colors, Black is normally the strongest when it's playing alongside colors such as blue for control and counter spells, or the famous zombie tribe. White usually comes with the aristocrats where the colors are trying to ping everyone down, sacrifice their creatures and bring them back. Red usually wants big hasty things and is often combined with black for demons, devils, and tieflings in magic. Green is very similar to the Orzhov style where it's very graveyard focused. But green is able to ramp and usually stores up large amounts of big creatures with high mana costs that black can bring back from the grave for cheaper. Black is extremely powerful when paired with any color, but as I have gone over in my previous video, you have not experienced true black until you have played it solo to experience its power, along with some of its limitations. The way that black is usually limited is that it has a tough time dealing with enchantments and artifacts. While black can kill creatures all day, it lacks the effects to exile them for good. Black also suffers to an extreme amount when other players decide to add some graveyard hate. For example, cards like Rest in Peace, Leyline of the Void, and Grafdicker's Cage. For all of my graveyard based players out there, you know exactly what I mean. Most commander decks have ways to get things back from their graveyard, and in my opinion, every deck should have some way to interact with its own graveyard. Whether that's casting spells from it with flashback, reanimation spells, or just returning cards to your hand. Graveyard Synergy and Graveyard Hate are something that I believe every deck should come equipped with. So let's get started in a way where black can get over its limitations by handling artifacts and enchantments. To start off this section, we're gonna talk about probably the best card printed in mono black to deal with these situations, Feed the Swarm. So for two mana at sorcery speed, destroy a target creature or enchantment and opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanent's mana value. So again, like I mentioned before, we're going to be paying life to get this effect, but this handles enchantments, which will be super important in any mono black deck, especially only being at 2 mana. Next up we have Gate to Phyrexia. So for 2 black mana, we get an enchantment that says sacrifice a creature, destroy target artifact. Activate this ability only during your upkeep and only once each turn. So it's limiting us on the effect, but it is a way that we can, as a black player, we can make a token or make a creature that wants to be sacrificed we can sacrifice it at our upkeep and get rid of another pesky artifact that our opponents control next up we have phyrexian tribute so for two and a black we have a sorcery that says sacrifice two creatures destroy target artifact 
So again, it's kind of clunky. We're losing a card in our hand. We're paying three mana and we're losing two creatures, but it does allow us to get rid of an artifact. And like I said, one of Mono Black's strong suits is bringing stuff back from the graveyard or us wanting things to die. So sacrificing the two creatures might not be as bad as you think. And getting rid of a really powerful artifact can be something that we need to handle before we can win the game. I know that these effects may seem clunky, but they're honestly the best ones that I could find in Mono Black that destroy artifacts or enchantments. And as you can tell, the theme here is that black is either going to require that we sacrifice a creature or that we pay our own life total to give us that effect. You will need more destroy effects in your deck, so you're going to run things like Nevenral's Disc or Oblivion Stone. But because this is a mono black video, I'm not going to mention colorless ways to solve our problem. Continuing on our theme of removal, black is adept at wiping the board. White and black usually have similar board wipes, but where black comes out on top is additional effects that black board wipes can have stapled on top. For example, things like Blood Money, Deadly Tempest, and Decree of Pain. These board wipes are all expensive mana wise, but will give you some great upside as well as clearing the board, giving us many creatures to choose from to reanimate. So in many ways, black is playing more removal and board wipes won't hurt us as much. So stapling on additional effects to our board wipes can only serve to help us get that much more ahead. I also want to mention Black's classic board wipes, as I'm sure that many, if not all of you, already know these cards by heart, so I'm not going to waste time explaining them. But these cards are Toxic Deluge and Damnation. As I mentioned before, Black has tons of ways to deal with creatures, as, so I'm not going to waste your time going over all of the best ways Black has to deal with things on the board. I wanted to mention how a player in Mono Black can get around Black's downside, and I wanted to talk about what Black excels in, but if I had to mention some cards quickly, some of my favorite target removal in Mono Black would be Baleful Mastery for that Exile effect, Heartless Act as it's very modal and can hit many different things, and Shield Dread's Edict as it gets around Indestructible or Hexproof as it makes the opponent sacrifice, and we can choose a token that they may have that's powerful, obviously a non-token creature, and even a Planeswalker. Moving on to the Ramp section in Mono Black, if it even exists I guess. In this section, I want to focus on things that will give us mana continually. So I will get things like Cabal Ritual and Dark Ritual out of the way. These cards are awesome, and I will always love seeing them in my hand. Paying mana to get more mana isn't the kind of ramp that I want to focus on though. Being able to play a big creature or even your commander a turn early is really sweet and will definitely put you ahead. And you're in mono black, so if your threat gets killed, we can always get it back. But moving on to the true ramp section, we're going to start off with our mana dorks. The first mana dork we're going to talk about is Bog Witch. So for 3 mana, 2 and a black, we get a 1-1 one, one human spell shaper that says, pay 1 black, tap the Bog Witch, discard a card, add 3 black mana to our mana pool. So the Bog Witch is kind of acting like our apprentice wizard or our dreamscape artist in mono blue, where we have to give up something and we get a little something in return. The Bog Witch isn't the best, but it does get us ahead on mana, and I thought it was interesting that it allows us to discard a card, which Mono Black wants sometimes when we have a big spell or a big creature that we can reanimate. The Bog Witch will allow us to ditch that spell, get that creature in the graveyard, and give us three mana that we can use to maybe play into our reanimation spell. Next up is the Vesper Ghoul. So same mana cost, two and a black for a one one. The Vesper Ghoul says, Tap the Vesper Ghoul, pay one life, add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So it's a kind of a clunky mana dork. You know, usually those green mana dorks are cheaper than three mana, but I thought the Vesper Ghoul was interesting because it takes our life away like Mono Black does, and it gives us a mana of any color. Obviously, we're going to be choosing black, but adding colored mana to our mana pool is certainly interesting. We have the classic, the mirror cycle that I've been talking about. And so this one is Leaden Mirror. So for two mana, we get a 1-1 mirror that taps and adds a black mana to our mana pool. And moving on, we have creatures that are going to give us more mana. So things like Crypt Gas, Magus of the Coffers, and Yurkana Revenant. So Crypt Gas is interesting because it doubles up our swamps, which obviously we'll only be playing. And it has the Extort ability. And if you may be questioning, uh, Extort is a hybrid white and a black but it, the extort is a reminder text. So in the reminder, in the, in the parentheses, it is showing the white mana symbol. So the Crypt Gas is a mono black card. It just has a white symbol on it in a reminder text. 
but we can pay the extort cost to drain our opponents and our swamps will tap for more. The Megas of the Coffers is just a replacement for our Cabal Coffers. So it's Cabal Coffers on a creature that we can pay mana into and tap and get that bonus for our swamps to get ahead on mana. And Nirkana Revenant doubles up our swamps. It's more expensive than Crypt Gas, but it's just an additional effect. And I also found a, a few different ways that black can get us ahead on mana. Uh, things like Call of the Weak, Reign of Filth, Song of the Damned, Black Market, Revel in Riches, Sacrifice, Crick, Son of Yagmoth, and Pitiless Plunderer. Now these cards are interesting because they give mana in a different way where they're either going to need us to sacrifice a creature or pay life, kind of the theme of this video. But these are different ways, like I was saying, these aren't secure ways that we can get ahead on mana. Some of these things are ways like Black Market Connections needs things to die, Crick we pay our life total into the black cost of things, Pitiless Plunderer is great because it needs your creatures to die and it makes treasures which you can keep around. So all these ways are great ways to get extra mana, but they're not consistent. Whereas a mana dork says, tap this, gain a mana, this uh, other conditions need to be met before you actually get that mana. But I wanted to include them here because black excels at doing things like this, where you sacrifice a creature or discard a card or pay life and you can get something in return. So that's what I wanted to include in this section. Next up, we have the mana rock section. And Wizards actually had just completed this three colored mana rock cycle. So for black, we have Crowded Crypt. So for two and a black, we get an artifact that just says tap and add a black. Whenever a creature you control dies, put a corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. Pay six mana, four black black, and tap to the Crowded Crypt, and sacrifice the Crowded Crypt. Create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed for each corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. So now we don't actually have to do that until we're ready to win the game. Crowded Crypt in this instance is basically just going to act as our command sphere that doesn't sack to draw a card, but it can stick around all game and whenever a creature we control dies, we'll put the counter on it and we can get it up to 20 if we want to, pay that six mana, get 22 two black zombies and close out a game. That ability doesn't say that we can activate it at only at sorcery speed, so we can do that on an opponent's end step, get our zombies, and go right to combat. And last up for true ramp, we have Liliana of the Dark Realms. So Liliana is a four mana, three loyalty planeswalker, and her plus one says search your library for a swamp, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Liliana is one of the only cards in black that will actually get you a land. It doesn't get it out to the battlefield, so obviously it's not mono green, but getting a land to our hand is super interesting. Liliana also has a minus three of target creature gets either plus X plus X or minus X minus X where X is the number of swamps you control. So she is ramp, she is removal, and her minus six, you get an emblem with swamps you control, have tap and add four black to your mana pool. So she's ramp on her plus, she's removal on her minus, and then obviously her minus six just gives us more mana. We've covered Mono Black's weaknesses, hitting enchantments and artifacts, and we've covered some of Mono Black's strengths like board wipes and targeted removal. We have gone over some ways that you can get around ramping in Mono Black, and now is the time to go over the power of Mono Black, the powerhouse cards, the things that will win you the game, what Mono Black is known for. And I don't think I can start off this section without talking about the most terrifying pair of cards Mono Black has to offer Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth and Cabal Coffers. Urborg is a legendary land that comes down and says it makes all other lands swamps, so even our opponents. Urborg actually doesn't have a tap ability, but Urborg makes every land a swamp, so technically it makes itself a swamp. Cabal Coffers is a land, it's non-legendary, that says pay two mana and tap the Cabal Coffers, and you add a black for each swamp you control. These two cards probably made all of my non-black players cringe or cry. These two cards are very potent and deadly because lands are tough to interact with, and land destruction is usually frowned upon in the broader EDH community. So by just running these two cards and a couple tutors, you can safely guarantee an absurd amount of mana for yourself to close out a game or to get ahead early. You can also achieve this or double the effect with Magus of the Coffers as I mentioned earlier. Now that you've made all that mana, what are the cards that you want to put that mana into? Maybe a few X spells would be good. But it's really too bad that Black doesn't have any good ones. Like Torment of Hailfire, or Exsanguinate, or Profane Command. 
Yeah, there's not much to say here. You make a lot of mana, and you pump it into the X spells. Some other notable finishers in Mono Black include, and are not limited to, Rise of the Dark Realms and Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. Mono Black also offers us the Aristocrat route to ping our opponents down with cards like Zulaport Cutthroat, Blood Artist, Sir Conrad, and Bastion of Remembrance. These cards especially combo together. When one thing dies, our opponents are going to get drained and we get to gain. So we can continue to pay our life into our effects to just keep breaking the game, to keep removing things, and to keep ramping. Now, I've gone on and on about Black's many game finishers, and it sure seems like there's a lot more here than I thought. But I wanted to round out this video by talking about my favorite part of Mono Black, the reanimation. To start off, we have the best reanimation spell in Mono Black, Reanimate. This will allow us to target any creature, even our opponents. Who doesn't want to pay 7 life and bring back a milled or discarded creature as early as turn 1 if we even got that lucky? Some of my other favorite reanimation spells in Mono Black include Victimize, which will allow us to sacrifice a creature to get 2 back, so we can get rid of that pesky little token and get back 2 big things. Phyrexian Reclamation, which is an enchantment where we can pay 1 black and 2 life to bring a creature back to our hand, which is amazing as it can be activated at instant speed. Dread Return, which we it's a little expensive at 4 mana, but we can cast it, get something back, and then we can sacrifice 3 creatures and pay the flashback cost to do it again. Patriarch's Bidding is interesting in tribal heavy decks where it's going to target each opponent, but if we wanted to build our deck with a few more tribal creatures, we can make sure to take more advantage of that than another deck who might not be running a bunch of creatures of one type. And the last card I want to talk about is Living Death. Living Death has been the key card in many black decks that I've gone up against. Living Death is 5 mana, and it says each player exiles the creatures that they control, then you bring back all the creatures in your graveyard, and then the cards that you exiled go to your graveyard. So it's this weird zone shifting card, and it's especially terrifying with enter the battlefield effects as you st you get to stack how each creature en re-enters the battlefield, and especially if Living Death has Flash, or the black player is able to sacrifice their entire board and then cast Living Death, they lose nothing, they bring their entire graveyard back, it is incredible. That Rise of the Dark Realms, which is 9 mana, gets all creatures, but I have seen Living Death used to basically close out a game in a very similar fashion. So these cards will allow us to get cards back from the dead, baiting out removal, and allowing us to basically have a second copy of our dead card just by bringing it back over and over again. Cards like Buried Alive and Tomb will allow us to get exactly what we need into our graveyard when we need it. I also want to mention Animate Dead, Necromancy, and Dance of the Dead. These are enchantments that will allow us to bring back creatures that are just as powerful as the spells on this list. Getting the enchantments removed does take the creatures away, but these cards are super powerful and really fun if you can find a way to recur your enchantments. Kind of like in a Muldrotha deck. Mono Black also contains the Edict effects like Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos, which can be incredibly powerful when paired with the Aristocrat and Sacrifice style of gameplay that Mono Black is already known to do. These cards will allow you to tear apart your opponent's boards while you continue to do your evil things. Black is also the color that comes with the best tutors, such as Grim Tutor, Imperial Seal, Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, and I threw in Diabolic Tutor just for fun. These cards will allow you to search your library for any card at the right moment. Your big creature just died? Go and get Reanimate. You have one half of the Urborg Coffer combo? Go get the other half. You're ready to win the game? Go get Torment of Hailfire. Personally, I don't like to play a ton of tutors. Maybe one or two, as they're extremely powerful and, it can, and very consistent for a casual format. But that reminds me to talk about one more area where Mono Black excels, if it didn't have enough already. Card draw. Things like Black Market Connections, Phyrexian Arena, Grim Horror and the Boogeyman Necropotence. These cards are extremely self-explanatory, but they're ways that we can exchange our life totals to get powerful effects, especially with a card like Black Market Connections or Necropotence. Other cards that I wanted to mention in the card draw area would be Read the Bones, Knight's Whisper, and Deadly Dispute. These are some of my favorite spells that Black can use to draw extra cards. They're obviously not as powerful as the effects that stick around on the board, but they can be good in a pinch when we need to get a few extra things into our hand. Honestly, I feel like I can go on and on about Mono Black. Look, I get it. Mono Black is really good. It covers a lot of areas in Magic that are essential to playing the game. It has great control and single target removal and board wipes. It has many tutors and ways to draw a lot of cards. 
It has ways to make mana and a variety of X spells to choose from to close out a game. I know that blue is the big boogeyman of magic because of the dreaded counter spell, but in my opinion, black has so much going on that it might just beat out blue in straight value and the variety of things the color can do. No one likes getting their big splashy card countered, but black has 10 different ways to drain your life total, kill your creatures, draw cards, reanimate stuff, burn your crops, and slap your grandma. I hope that this video has convinced you to give mono black a shot in Commander. If you're thinking about building a mono black deck or already have one, leave it in the comments below and tell us why you built the deck. My personal mono black deck is Toshiro Umezawa. His art is what really drew me to his card, and he rewards me for playing at instant speed, as well as controlling my opponents. But anyway, if you like the video and like what I'm trying to do here, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. I'm Azrain, your friendly neighborhood black mage, and thanks for watching.